my channel. If you are new here, my name is Casey and I'm the designer behind the indie sewing pattern company, Pattern Scout. Today I'm going to be sharing a tutorial for how to make a shirt jacket, aka a shacket. So the shacket has been a very popular style lately. It's a great fall transitional piece to have in your wardrobe and it's actually pretty simple to make. For this project I'm going to be using my cozy jacket pattern that I have available in my pattern shop. I'll put a link in the description below to that and I'm also going to be using the cozy jacket color and pocket expansion pack. I'll also put a link to that in the description below. And that just provides a convertible collar and a patch pocket for the front bodice with a flap. The original cozy jacket pattern comes as a cropped length. We're just gonna be lengthening the bodice. I'll show you how to do that along with a few other small tweaks to make this pattern into the shacket style. I love outerwear projects and this has become one of my favorite things to wear this fall. It's perfect for this transitional fall weather. And the fabric that I'm using is a kind of chunky boucle style wool that I picked up from Measure Fabric, although I think it is sold out as of filming this tutorial. But Measure really does carry a lot of great dead stock designer fabrics, and there are several other fabrics that I've had my eye on out there. I'm trying to exhibit some self-control here, but yeah, they have a lot of beautiful fabrics, so I'll put a link in the description below to their shop. All right, let's get started on the project. The first thing that I want to do is modify the collar. The expansion pack includes an upper collar and an under collar, and you can see that the under collar is just slightly smaller than the upper collar, and that is on purpose. So to modify the collar, I'm going to cut it in half lengthwise, and then I'm gonna tape it back together with about an inch and a half added to the center of the collar. And this is just gonna make the collar bigger so that it, it will look a little bit more aesthetically appropriate for the scale of the fabric that I'm using. And I've done this to both of the collar pieces and as you can see, the under collar is still smaller slightly than the upper collar. I'm also adding a three inch extension to the center front bodice for the placket. And this is a little bit larger than I have instructed in the expansion pack instructions. Again, I just wanted to make this a little bit beefier to go with the scale of the fabric, and I wanna make sure to mark the center front because I'll add notches there. The fabric that I'm using for this project is this really beautiful Buffalo Check metallic tweed boucle that I picked up from Measure Fabric. And I'm going to be using the navy side as my right side of fabric. I decided to lengthen the bodice and create a curved bottom hem on this shacket shirt style jacket. So I'm just drawing that in with my Chaco liner and I ended up lengthening the bodice to about 34 inches from the neckline edge down to the hem. And I will end up shortening this just a little bit eventually, but I wanted to go extra long so I could try it on and make sure that I liked the length before I committed to a length. And I wanna make sure to clip all of my notches so that I can line everything up appropriately once I start sewing this together. And I also want to make sure to transfer the notch of the center front bottom edge down to the bottom edge of the shirt. Because this fabric is so thick and because there's a pattern and I'd like to match the pattern up really nicely, I'm cutting the front bodice pieces on a single layer. And so once I get that first front bodice side cut, I'm going to use that as my pattern piece to cut the other side. And I'm just laying it on top of the fabric, right sides together so that I can create a mirrored piece. And I'm aligning up all of those edges of that buffalo check pattern. So you can see I've got it lined up horizontally and vertically here. And then I'll just use that as my pattern piece to cut out the opposite side. And this way the pattern will align nicely horizontally. This technique worked out great, although I do kind of wish I would have shifted the pattern a little bit more to the left so that the pieces would be perfectly symmetrical. As you can see, the center front, they're a little different along the center front placket edge, but it's okay, it's not super, super noticeable, but I notice it, of course. I am cutting the back bodice on the fold and I'm measuring that buffalo check pattern on the fabric to make sure that I get a nice strip of the buffalo check down the center back bodice. And so once I get that aligned and have the fabric nice and flat, I'm aligning the side seam of my front bodice with the side seam of the back bodice so that I can make sure that those also match horizontally along the side seam. Then I will use that front bodice piece again to get the bottom edge aligned and also create the curve of the back bodice. And you can see now that I've got a nice symmetrical back piece. 
I also cut the sleeves one at a time using the first sleeve to match up and mirror for the second sleeve. I also cut my two collar pieces, one for the upper collar and one for the under collar. And the under collar would typically be cut on the bias, but since this fabric has a somewhat loose weave, it has a little bit of natural mechanical stretch to it, so I cut it on the straight grain. Next, I took all of my pattern pieces over to the serger and just serged along all of the edges to keep them from fraying because again, this fabric has a little bit of a loose weave and it tends to fray and shed a little bit. I'm interfacing the placket with a three inch strip of interfacing and I'm laying this on the wrong side of fabric about a half inch away from the edge of the placket on the front bodice. I'll do this for both of the front bodice pieces and I'm using an old piece of fabric as a press cloth to adhere that interfacing to my fabric. I'm turning my iron down to a polyester setting because this fabric does have some synthetic content. And I'll press the fabric from the right side just to further adhere that interfacing. Then I will press the placket by folding the edge in by a half inch and then folding the placket in half to conceal the interfacing. Now this fabric is pretty thick and it doesn't really wanna hold a fold. So this is kind of being done in vain, but I really wanna just get that center front notch marked in the top of the placket on the back side. So I'm using the center front notch from before to mark that. And I've interfaced both of the front bodice pieces here. Now I can start assembling the bodice. So I've got the back bodice laid face up and I'm laying the two front bodice pieces face down and aligning these pieces at the shoulders and I'll sew along both shoulders with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Once I have both shoulder seams sewn, I can attach the sleeves. And to do this, I'm just going to open up the bodice, lay it face up with right side facing me, and align the sleeve cap right sides together with the arm side of the jacket. So first I'm aligning the center notch of the sleeve cap with the shoulder seam and then aligning the front notch with the front bodice seam and the back notches of the sleeve with the back bodice seam and the back notches are marked with double notches and then I'll sew this with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and I also want to make sure that I have my seam allowance of the shoulder pressed open as I sew this sleeve to the shoulder and I'm going slow here just kind of taking my time making sure there's no puckers or gathers in the sleeve as it goes under the needle. After I had my sleeves and shoulders sewn, I decided that I wanted to top stitch the seam allowances of the shoulder and the sleeve seam. So I'm doing that here on the shoulder, I'm top stitching both sides of the seam allowance down and on the sleeve, I'm top, top stitching the seam allowance toward the sleeve. Then with right sides together, I'm going to align the sleeve and the side seam and sew with a continuous seam all the way down the sleeve and the side seam. Then my sewing machine needle decided to go rogue. Once I had my sewing machine needle securely inserted into the sewing machine, I could continue sewing the sleeve seam and the side seam of the bodice on both sides with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. This fabric is a little bit bulky, so it does take some finessing to get it through the machine, so I'm just taking my time with each step. Next, I interfaced the upper collar, so this is gonna be the bigger collar piece, and did this the same way that I interfaced the placket. So I'll turn the upper collar right side up and place the under collar on top right sides together and I'm going to pin at the corners and at the center of the collars to attach them together. And you'll notice that you'll need to stretch the under collar just a little bit to make it fit. And that is intentional because that stretch is going to help the upper collar stay turned down once we get the whole collar assembly finished. So I'll start about 5 8 inch from the bottom and sew around the three sides and stop about 5 8 inch from the other side at the bottom. This is going to allow me to turn that bottom edge up so you don't want to go all the way to the end. Then I'll just trim my seam allowances down to about a quarter inch and I can turn the collar right side out. Now, like I mentioned before, this fabric does not want to hold a press. I am gonna go ahead and kind of try to press this a little bit anyway, and I'm using my fingers, like little spider fingers, to sort of press those edges of the seam allowance to the very edge of the collar for a nice crisp collar. And it's not gonna hold a fold here, but this will kind of help me later when I do finish the collar. So I've got my bodice right side up and I'm opening up the neckline here and I want to make sure that I locate those center front notches for the original center front of the center front bodice. And I'll take the under collar, the side that's not interfaced and align it with the collar edge first at the center back. Then I'll use the notches on the under collar to align it with the shoulders. 
And then when it comes to the center front, I wanna make sure that I keep that seam allowance folded under and I'll align the folded edge of that seam allowance with the center front of the bodice and pin that in place. And I'll do this on both sides of the collar and the center front bodice. And then I just wanna make sure that I place pins in between to keep everything nicely distributed along that collar edge. For the next step, I wanna make sure that I keep that upper collar folded out of the way and I'm gonna sew the collar to the bodice with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And you can see as I'm sewing this, I'm just keeping that upper collar folded out of the way and going slowly, making sure that I don't have any gathers or puckers in my fabric of the bodice as I go under the sewing needle. And I'm kind of repositioning my fabric as I go too, just kind of making sure to spread it out nicely and neatly. And then when I get to the edge, I wanna make sure that I maintain that fold in the edge of the collar. So now we've got the collar attached to the bodice. You can see that the upper collar is still loose. And if I turn this with the wrong side facing me, so the interior of the jacket, I can see how this collar is gonna to start to come together. So the collar will be folded under and attached to the bodice, but first I need to finish the placket edge at the collar. So I've turned this right side up again. I'm going to fold under that half inch fold allowance there, and then I'm gonna fold the placket in the wrong direction so that those center front bodice notches line up, and then the edge fold of the placket covers the very, very edge of the collar where it attaches to the bodice. I'll pin that in place and then I'm gonna sew right across the top of that placket, keeping the upper collar out of the way with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. I'll do this on both sides of the bodice plackets. So I'm starting on the collar part. I'm just getting my needle started and lining it up with the 5 8 inch seam allowance where the collar attaches to the bodice. And then I wanna make sure that I keep that fold pressed in the top of the placket. And so when I get there, I have to lift up my presser foot and make sure everything is nicely aligned. Again, keeping that upper collar out of the way and I'm just gonna sew right across the top of that placket with that 5 8 inch seam allowance. And I'm going very, very slow here to make sure that it is nicely aligned and that I get everything folded and just perfectly aligned for the top of the placket. And here's how that looks up close. And so that fold of the collar is out of the way. And I just wanna trim the top of the placket to reduce the bulk. So I'm starting really close to the edge there to trim that corner out of the way. And then I also wanna trim the top of the placket out of the way, but I wanna taper it back toward the collar so that I still have that seam allowance at the collar to help me with folding this all down. Once I have that trimmed, I can turn the placket right side out and poke out the corner really well. And you can see where that wants to fold under now. It meets up right at the edge of that collar. And now I want to trim the seam allowance of the collar right along the edge of that placket. So I'm snipping it right up to the seam there, but not through it. And that way I can fold that seam allowance into the collar. Then I can fold the upper collar seam allowance by 5 8 inch, align it with the seam where the collar attached to the bodice, and pin that in place. So once this is all pinned in place, I'll be able to top stitch the upper collar down and conceal the seam allowance of the collar and bodice assembly. So I'm going to fold this under by 5 8 inch along the entire edge of the upper collar and pin that in place. And once that's all pinned in place, I can top stitch the collar down on the interior. But first I decided I wanted to just go ahead and do a basting stitch to hold this collar in place since the fabric is a little bit bulky. It'll just make my life a little bit easier when I go to top stitch this collar in place. So I'm just using a needle and thread to do a very, very loose basting stitch along the entire edge of this upper collar along the interior of the bodice. And I'm removing all of the pins because this will just make it easier to sew. And once I get to the end, I'll just leave that thread loose and trim it kind of long so that I can pull it out later. Now I want to flip this over to the right side of the garment, so the exterior of the garment, and I'm just going to top stitch around the entire perimeter of this collar, around the top three exposed edges and along the edge along the bodice. And to do this, I'm using my fingers again to sort of press that seam allowance out so that I get right along the edge of the seam there. And I'm doing it probably about an eighth inch away from the edge of the collar. 
this is gonna give a really nice, neat finished edge to that collar. Even though it is kind of a bulky fabric, top stitching it like this is gonna make sure that everything stays nice and crisp. And once I do the three edges of the collar that will be turned down, I'm gonna actually stop and take the collar out of the sewing machine and then go in from the other side so that I can have the collar on the inside of my sewing machine. It makes it a little bit easier for me to sew it like this. And I'm just going straight across the bottom of the collar where it attaches to the bodice. And again, I'm getting right along the edge there, probably about an eighth inch away from the edge. And this is just gonna catch the interior of the collar on the interior of the bodice and then I can remove all of those basting stitches that I put in by hand. And that you can see is a nice collar. That's how it looks from the exterior. I decided to trim the bodice length a little bit because I felt like it was too long once I tried it on. So I just created a little template here of the curve of the bottom hem and then I moved it up about three inches and then traced the template with my Chaco liner to create a line that I was then going to cut. So I just did this first on one side of the front bodice. And then once I had that cut, I folded it over so that it was on top of the back bodice and use that as an edge for the trimming of the back bodice as well. Then I folded the whole bodice in half and finished the other side of the back bodice so that it was symmetrical and the other side of the front bodice as well. And once I had the bodice trimmed, I also surged along the bottom edge just to keep that edge from fraying. Next, I was ready to hem the bodice, but first I needed to prepare the bottom of the placket. So the placket's gonna be folded over like so, and the bottom of the hem is gonna be folded up by an inch. I'm just folding it one time by an inch. So to make the bottom edge a little bit neater, I'm folding the placket in the wrong direction, so right sides together along that placket edge, and then folding the fold in the side of the placket as it will be folded under when it's flipped to the right side. I'm just going to pin that in place toward the wrong side and then I'm going to sew with an inch seam allowance along the bottom of the placket. So I've done that here for the plackets on both sides of the front bodice. Now I can trim that placket to reduce bulk. I'm just trimming the part that is folded over because I want that inch hem to extend into the placket when I turn this right side out. So I'll turn this right side out and the same as we did for the top of the placket, you can see where that edge wants to fold under now and the fold of the hem is concealed in the placket at the end. So since my placket will not hold a fold, I'm just gonna pin this in place along the entire length of the placket making sure that I line up all of the plaid along the edges there. When I get to the top of the placket where the placket meets the collar, I just wanna make sure that that seam allowance is tucked neatly inside the placket at the top. So I'll tuck that in and put a pin there to hold it in place. Then I'll just top stitch along the entire edge of that placket about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. And when I get to the bottom, I just wanna make sure that that hem is folded up by an inch and tucked neatly into the end of the placket here. And it is a little bit bulky here, so I'm just going really slow so I don't break a needle. I've done this for both plackets of the front bodice. So now you can see that this is really starting to come together and now it is time to hem the bodice. I'll be turning up the bodice hem by one inch along the entire curved edge of the bodice at the bottom. And you'll notice that it starts to get a little bit wonky when you get to these uh, concave curves. So to help me get this turned under nice and neat, I'm just doing a little hand basted stitch, a very loose stitch along that curved edge. And I'm gonna kind of pull that to sort of gather the interior of that curve and make it lay a little bit more flat. And then once I get that curved the way I like it, I'll just pin baste it in place to keep it all together. And then that'll make it easier for me to sew around those curved edges. And I'll do this for the entire bottom edge of the shacket. Then I'll sew with a one inch seam allowance to finish the hem. 
To finish the sleeve, I'm just going to hem the sleeve by three inches. This is gonna give me kind of a wide cuff feel to the sleeve hem. So I folded that to the wrong side and also around the perimeter to secure that hem in place. And I've got this over the arm of my sewing machine. It is a little bit of a tight fit, so just go slow and take your time. I've put a lot of pins here to make sure it stays even. Next, I prepared the patch pockets for the front bodice by cutting them just a little bit taller than the pattern piece, so about an inch taller. And then I'm using Wonder Tape along all four sides to aid in folding these under. So I'll fold the two sides and the bottom under by about a quarter inch, and then I'm going to fold the top edge under by about an inch, and I'm folding these toward the wrong side of the pocket. Then I will top stitch that top fold, the one inch fold in place, just to hold that together. That'll finish the top of the pocket. And once I get that sewn, I can attach the pocket to the front bodice. So I'm just laying this on the front bodice to align it with the pattern of the buffalo check, pinning it in place all the way around, and then I'll top stitch along the two sides and the bottom to secure the pocket to the bodice. And this can get a little bit bulky. Again, just take your time. This fabric is, is quite bulky to get under the sewing machine, but I'm going slow, even though I have this sped up quite a bit and just making sure that I'm not sewing any errant pieces of the jacket together and just getting right along the edge of that pocket about a 16th of an inch away from the edge of the pocket to secure that in place. For the pocket flaps, instead of cutting two separate pocket flap pieces as instructed on the pattern piece, I actually just cut one that can be folded over and I'm interfacing one side on the wrong side of the pocket flap. So I'm doing this the same way, using a press cloth to adhere this to the fabric. Then I wanna fold this in the wrong direction, almost in half. I'm leaving a little bit extra at the top. And I had also surged along that top edge, but I'm gonna sew the two sides together so that I can flip the pocket flap inside out. And then I wanna top stitch around the edge and add a buttonhole here. So I've done that here. I also top stitched the open side closed just to make that easier to install. And I'm gonna use my clover buttonhole chisel to open up the buttonhole. And I've done this for both of the pocket flaps. So I've got my bodice here laying right side up so the exterior of the bodice is facing me. And I'm going to align my pocket flap with the top of the pocket. So I'm gonna turn this upside down and turn it with the wrong side of the pocket flap facing me and align the top edge, that surged edge of the pocket flap with the top of the pocket, if that makes any sense. Then I'll pin that in place. And I'm just gonna sew right along the edge of that pocket there, right along the top edge, which is actually at the bottom. Once I get that sewn on, I'll flip the pocket flap down so that now it is covering the top of the pocket and I will top stitch that fold along the top of the pocket flap in place to keep that pocket flap in the down position. For buttons, I'm gonna be using these jeans tack buttons. I thought these looked really cool with the fabric. This is an antique copper and I'll put a link in the description below to these buttons. I'm gonna start by sewing the buttonholes first. And since this is kind of a larger jacket, it's gonna be a piece of outerwear. I am just doing four large buttonholes and I'm going over them twice since this fabric is so bulky. Then I'll use my buttonhole foot to open these buttonholes up. And then I wanna make sure that my tack buttons align with the center of the buttonhole. So the plaid actually makes it easy to line these up. I'll use my awl to poke a hole in the fabric then I'll put in the tack on the back side of the fabric. Then I'll press the button onto the tack. And I have this little anvil here that came with my button snap setting tool. And I'll use my mallet to hammer that in place. And then I can usually just remove that little anvil once I get it started. And then I'll check it to make sure that it's good and tight and give it a few whacks to make sure it stays secure. And I'll do this for all four of the front buttons. I'll also do this for the pocket, and I probably should have done this before I actually installed the pocket, but I wanted to make sure that the button aligned perfectly with the buttonhole opening. So I'm just flipping this over so that I can get that pocket edge onto the tabletop and give that a few whacks without poking a hole in my fabric below. So I wanna make sure that all the fabric is out of the way behind that tack button. 
And I also have this little setting tool. So I've turned the button over so that the, the button is actually on the tabletop and I'm using that to kind of hammer that tack portion of the button. And now all the buttons are installed and I think this looks great. So happy with how this jacket turned out. The only thing that I think I might add is inseam pockets at the hips, or maybe even some patch pockets at the hips. I keep finding myself trying to slide my hands into the pockets that don't exist down there. I should have added them in. I don't know why I didn't. But anyway, I probably will eventually add those at some point down the road. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more from me, be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell notification. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. Okay, I think that is all I have for you today. I will see you in the next video. Bye.